Fish. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for everybody for coming. There's so many. First of all, I love this organization. Uh, I think uh, I wish that uh, when I was young and starting the business that there was a group of people like this that were living open lives and, and uh, at work. And uh, it's such, such a great thing that it exists now and that our world is what it is now and has changed so much in the many years I've been doing this. Uh, and thank you to a lot of the people that are here today uh, who work on our shows and are really the heart and soul of these shows and, uh, and help bring these characters and these stories. Um, and finally, this is my first time moderating anything, so they've prepared questions for me. So much the way the shows work, someone else did all the hard work and now I get to stand <laughs> up here and take the credit. Um, all right, so our first, oh, that's me. And then uh, Echo Kellum, come on Echo, come on out, Mr. Terrific. Nafisa Williams, come on out. Nafisa. <laughs> Katie Lotz. Sarah Lance, White Canary. Keenan Lonsdale, Wally West. And Jess McCallan, Ava Sharp. I should have brought my phone. <laughs> it's so great having you guys here. It's good to be here. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> um, so we'll just go down the line for starters first, and then they've, like I said, they've got some excellent individual questions for everybody. But okay. talk about what it's like to play. Uh, let's start by having you talk about what it's like to play a member of the LGBT community and what that means for you personally. Um, maybe uh, any inspirations uh, as you sort of discover the role, or what it means to be a, an actual member of the LGBT community and, and how that informs your, your life uh, as, a, as an actor. So let's start with you, Echo. Yeah, um, well for me, I, I take a lot of pride in it. Um, one of my parents is a member of the LGBT community and <laughs> we didn't know until I was 11. Basically, he was married. Um, and then he wanted to live like his true self, you know? Uh, and I remember he told me, he said, the only difference is today you know, and yesterday you didn't. I'm still the same exact person. Um, so that's really what stuck with me in that aspect that we're all who we are and our sexuality, our gender, our race doesn't change anything about that. It's just parts of ourselves. Um, so for me, I thought it was important to play Curtis like me. Um, and he happens to be gay, and that's okay. Um, but I don't think anyone ever really lives their life just through their sexuality. Like, yeah. we're so many layers of different things, and it's important. Um, but, you know, I just, I just wanted to, like, really just own, like, just honor the fact that we all come in different shades and different types, and um, just play them to, as true to myself as possible. And it, it, my pops is like so proud and I have friends who come up and they're just like, man, thank you for portraying that in that way. And it just means the world to me to just have that representation out there to have little kids look up and be like, man, I, I, wanna, I wanna be out. I wanna be who I am because that character <coughs> is who he is and it's okay. And I, that to me is like, if anybody feels that way, it's just like I'm doing my job and it really makes me happy. Well, we're really glad to have you. <laughs> so for me, giving voice over to Anissa, a.k.a. Thunder, has been so rewarding and fulfilling. Um, I think the response from, from young women and young lesbian women in particular is that they feel normal from seeing Thunder. And to know that um, we all are a part of normalizing this. And um, I think that's been really, really cool about this. And again, just remembering that if I bring love to this character and remember mm -hmm. that the foundation is love and not so much about the sexuality of it all, that, that I'd be okay. And Anissa, you know, she's just been inspiring me, you know, to walk boldly in who I am. And I think that's what my message is, especially for, for everyone watching, to, to be bold about who you are and be unapologetic and inspire people to find out what, you know, what their superhero is inside of them. And, and it's just been great. It's been fun. I found myself being an advocate for, with the LGB, for the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. and that's been awesome. And um, yeah, I, I think the word for me is fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's about 
I, I believe that our duty is to inspire other people. And, and with this role and with playing Anissa, I feel I'm doing my job. And, and, and to me, that's, that's a blessing. Yeah. Sarah's sexuality is my favorite part about her. <laughs> um, Me too. Not only do I have to make out. <laughs> yeah, I get to make out with a lot of people. And, um, but I think it is, it really is what makes this character so meaningful uh, to me. And I think I've talked to a lot of fans and a lot of young girls um, who, who are, you know, who are gay or who are bisexual and men and women and how much it means to them in their life to be able to see that. And I think, you know, it's not only people in the community that it makes it so important for, but also people who aren't in the community. Because if you live somewhere and you don't know any bisexual people or a lesbian, it's like, it could be scary. Like things that we don't know are scary. Yeah. And so to introduce these characters into people's homes every week and for them to be like, oh, yeah, I, I know this girl. I like her. Like, and she likes boys and girls, but, she, but I still like her. She's still normal. <laughs> like, maybe this isn't so bad. And I think, like, what you said about and just making it normal yeah. is mm -hmm. really, like, the most important part, not only for people in the community, but also people who are not familiar with the community to become acquainted with it and yeah. maybe be a little less, you know, scared about it. And you were the you were the first regular that we had on the Arrowverse that yeah, was, was a LGBT long time character. Ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so long. I, I think I didn't didn't even know like when we first did it, I was just reading <laughs> in the script because like one episode I'm making out with Stephen Amell and then in the next episode it was like, and then her, you know, you and Katrina Law make out. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> we didn't have that conversation with you prior? No, I don't think we did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got the, like, you're the dead sister, and they gave me a black canary doll. And we're like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. It was like a side bonus. I, yeah. That's just too cool. Um, mm -hmm. I just realized as we were going down the line, I, you know, I came out. <laughs> Um, as queer last year, and I'm actually the only one playing a straight character. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! That's amazing! <laughs> um, which I think is the coolest thing. It's like, this is, we're all here, we're actors, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And now, and we're doing our job. Um, and so, uh, that's the point of this. It's like, it's being able to give everyone an equal platform to be able to play um, uh, any kind of character um, that the story um, is needing. Um, and that the audience is desiring and that the world is um, hoping for. And so we all, you know, just get to um, do our job. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's for me, uh, like I said, so Wally um, identifies as straight. And, um, but for me, being queer and getting to play this uh, superhero and a black superhero is just like um, an amazing thing. I think I was very afraid, especially when I was joining the show, um, to be out publicly because it's like, oh, but are people going to accept me? Um, would the company accept me? Um, and then that's why it was a huge thing to know that, you know, Greg Valenti, that, you know, you've created such a safe space. Because it's like, huh, all right. And then for, for me, I've been able to grow a lot and accept myself a lot because this was an accepting community um, and was met with a ton of support from uh, fans and coworkers and um, everyone about myself being out, and I just still continue to, you know, do my job. Yeah. Very, yeah. Well. Very well. Very <laughs> well. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, um, it's really interesting because I play a lot of lesbians. Like, I, it's so, <laughs> I, I, like, this is the third lesbian. It actually, I was sexually fluid in the last character that I played, and some casting director once told me that it was because I was tall and I had a deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the, what does that mean? <laughs> like, you know, and when I, and I was kind of actually offended by it, not because of that statement, because I am tall and I have a kind of a deep voice, I guess. Like, yeah. what, is that weird? <laughs> um, but what I love about what everyone's saying up here and Berlanti's la world that he's created is it's not, uh, the characters aren't caricatures of 
LGBTQ or gay or like their sexuality. You know, how sometimes writers or shows or you'll see it, a lesbian or whatever, be depicted a certain way on a television show and it's like, oh, because that's your, tip, your caricature of a lesbian. And I hate that. Like, why does it, because I'm tall, I have a deep, or because of whatever, whatever the wardrobe would be. You do this fluid thing where there's no, it's just the way they love. It's not, and their storylines aren't, just about that, like, oh, and we just have to always be hooking up or it always has to be this sexual tension. Like, we're, it's just real characters with these beautiful storylines and in this awesome heightened world, you know, and, and playing, it's like playing anyone that is anywhere in the LGBTQ, it's like with great power comes great responsibility. I think there's a great responsibility to play these characters, but it's also just a part of them, you know. You're not actually. You're just. You're just doing your job as yeah. as the, the you know humanizing <laughs> this heightened sexuality, and th it doesn't make up their entirety. You know mm -hmm. their sexuality. There's there's so so much richer and deeper, and it just becomes very normal. You just watch it, and n nothing you know rubs you strangely. Mm -hmm. So I actually want to talk about this for a second because this <coughs> is I'm old enough to remember when the hard thing to do or the thing that was really monitored was if executives or individuals in the community knew that someone was LGBTQ, uh, IA, um, they, they would be hesitant to cast them as a straight person. And they would speak in code about it to you. you know, so they would say, oh, they feel a little soft. Mm. This actor feels a little soft. Or, uh, oh, she feels a little hard. You know? Or she feels a little tough for that role. Uh, and that was about casting people who people knew maybe were out or were out in the community to play gay, and now the conversation seems to be, can straight individuals mm -hmm. play gay characters, mm -hmm. you know, or LGBT characters? <laughs> and as actors, what are your opinions and, and feelings about that, you know? Um, I certainly know some of my own informative kind of thing, which is just by nature of how the laws work, and I think rightly so, I can't ask any of you, you know? I, I, I don't know everyone's sexuality mm -hmm. on the stage, nor do I care to, <coughs> uh, and uh, unless it's important to you that I do know, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious as actors going in the room auditioning for parts, like what your feelings are about that. I th can I start? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. I was just, because um, we were having this conversation yeah. that ultimately when I read anything <laughs> and craft anything and any character, if I'm playing whatever, you know, a jackalope, I don't know. It like, wh who wants to watch a character that's not deep rooted in their heart, their yeah. vulnerability, their love, who wants to sit and, you know, even if that means their, um, you know, their ego is so big and their heart's so big and then they're a bad guy, you know, th wh whatever you're crafting, but it always has to come from love yep. or I think it's not interesting to watch. So that's, th that's my, my very short and sweet answer of playing, it doesn't matter what, it's just love, yeah. you know? I think for me, I was I was always looking forward to at a point in my career where I w would able would be able to play, you know, a, a good character who who was lesbian or bisexual. I've I've been opposite of men my whole career, so I'm just like, okay, this is different. This is new. You know, it's a challenge for me because I am a heterosexual. However, you know, again, it's just about the foundation of love. Like some people, they're, they're like, oh, wh you know, what was the research or what did you do since it's different and you're and you're not a lesbian woman? Is the foundation is love. And that's the truth that we have to bring to these characters, whether they're straight, whether they're lesbian, it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I was excited. I was excited. And then she, not just, a, she was a strong lesbian who was proud and she was bold about it. And that's what got me. So yeah, it was a no brainer. I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting what you say about like, can a straight person play <clears throat> um, a non-straight person and like, just throwing, I, this is probably not good because then that means like, you know, like then, oh, a straight person can't play a gay person. But I do think it is important to try to get, like if you have a transgender role, like the, the Danish girl, it would be great to get a transgender actor <laughs> playing that instead of like a white cis male playing a transgender. And I get it, like there's a lot of things that, go into it, and also it's also not fair to be like, you can't play this role because you're straight or whatever. Yeah. But I do think it is important to try to cast um, that kind of representation with people who are actually that, which, I don't know, it's, that's a hard one. I think it's a question that's coming up now yeah. as we've evolved, and thank, <laughs> and thank God it's coming up, right? Thank yeah. God that yeah. like, we're at a point where we're having these kind of yeah. conversations. And then you do, you get into specific kind of questions of like, is it, 
Is it different with where gender is concerned? And is it different where sexuality is concerned? You know, and, and, uh, and, and my own personal thing is just wanting more representation in general and openness in general. So that sometimes means straight individuals playing gay parts and gay people playing straight parts and, and that there's an openness uh, to, the, to the process, but that we're constantly ev evaluating it and reevaluating it. And I know from our end that, that we are, and I'm just so curious always from actors' ends, you know, are they, do they, you know, are there, are there parts and moments where you go, you know what, actually I have a lot in common with this character in, you know, not the sexuality, but all these other things, yeah. and I really feel like, you know, I've got something to bring to this role, or is that somehow, you know, prohibitive? Well, one of the interesting things about auditioning for Curtis is like, there was no mention of his sexuality in my audition at all. Another so. individual we didn't mention to. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, you know, it's like, for what was important, like, I, I go back to my pops, right? He was a very masculine male who, on the outset, most people would assume is a straight, cis, gender male, you know? And I think the thing I took from it was like, I went in and I, I saw Curtis, I saw him and I played it. And then at the end of the audition, it was like, wow, that was awesome, it was great. Uh, and then they were like, well, by the way, this character is a part of the LGBT community. And I was like, oh, great, perfect. You know, like as an actor, it's like, I'm here to do my job. It doesn't matter what sexuality or character is, but what was important to me was like not playing up a stereotype, not trying to be overly flamboyant or anything like that because mm -hmm. LGBT people, LGBTQ plus people are so diverse and all different types and shades. <laughs> so just as a straight male, that's important to me is to not try to placate any type of stereotypes or play up anything one way or the other, you know, and um, just kind of leave it in the hands of the people casting and producers to see they feel like I'm a good fit for that role or mm. not. But I was a little worried when I got it that it would kind of be a thing like the you know, LGBTQ community would be like, oh, we, we don't accept him because he's not mm -hmm. one of us. This is bull crap, you know, these planets. So there, there are those things that worry some actors too of like, man, I, I do appreciate it. Uh, like one actor gave up his role because it was originated, you know, for an Asian character. And he's like, I just feel like it should be like, let's keep it that way. And so there's a, a part of me that's like, man, should I not take this role to give someone else an opportunity to do that? Who really, uh, you know, is that, you know? Um, so it's just always kind of a struggle internally too, you know? Sir, I saw you nodding your head. I think. Like you wanted to say something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like what you were saying before about how um, when people are casting for things and they're saying, and you know, that kind of secret conversation that goes on behind <coughs> closed doors, like actors are very aware of that. And we grow up, even when you're not at all in the industry, you, you like, I grew up hearing that, knowing that. Um, and so it's important that that story is changed and that, that um, young actors and actresses, that, that we all um, hear a different story. We know that that's no longer the case, um, that people aren't talking behind, their, behind uh, closed doors saying, oh, well, knowing that they're out, they're not going to be casting them. So the more representation we have, obviously, then um, the more that's proof that that's changing. People yeah. can be more comfortable, confident. Um, I, I have so many people, friends, like, that will say to me, like, I really want to come out too, but I just, I'm scared. And it's like, even though they're seeing me still do my thing, and I'm pretty proud of everything that I'm doing right now, there's still s fear and, and scared. Because you can fix a problem, but it's like, people have dealt with this internal shame mm. um, their whole life. Like, the story has gone on for so long. So it's like, yeah, it's just, all, all we can do now is constantly adjust. Like you said, you guys are constantly adjusting and, and navigating that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so deep-rooted, so. It's a, uh, yeah, it's just changing that story somehow. What inspired you to share your own <coughs> truth? <coughs> um, well, I was uh, filming Love, Simon. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> 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 um, I was filming Love, Simon. I was playing this character, um, uh, and I don't want to give anything away for people that haven't seen it, um, but I was playing a character, and I was just like, Here's this film about... It's been out a number of weeks, okay. if you haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. You should leave right now. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'll just say it. So I'm playing this character who is dealing with also his, uh, coming to terms with his sexuality. Um, and the whole film is, is that. It's about embracing that and, um, and normalizing it, but it, it, but, and, and, and finding true love. 
And I was doing this <coughs> film, still absolutely terrified to walk onto a set and, and that like being like, do I say it to the cast, do I not? And then because like the first opportunity that came, I shied away from saying it. I was like, well, I guess I'm not saying it. <laughs> and then, um, and then, yeah, just before wrap, like on our last day, I was out to dinner with everyone and I said it to them. And, and Greg already knew and I knew I had his support. And even then, I have an openly out director who, um, you know, who you had your family on set. And I was still dealing with like weird shame. So it just kind of, it kind of put a mirror in front of my face to be like, you have, you couldn't be on a better set. You couldn't be on a more welcoming environment. Everyone here loves this. They will love you. Um, this is safe, like you're the one now stopping yourself. And so it just, it took that complete mirror f for me to realize that it was time now. Like I, like obviously there's so many things that have gone on in life that have given me those ideas and um, given me that story to, to make me believe into that, uh, such a negative narrative. But finally it got to a place where that was not the case and I only had to look at myself and be like, it's, it's now time for you to take that that step. Did you think that it would prohibit you from getting other roles in the future? <coughs> I had realized that I didn't care anymore. Mm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I, I realized I didn't care. I was like, I, you know, I don't have time. There's like, <laughs> I don't have time. If, if really, you know what, I really like myself. If someone doesn't want to work with me because of my sexuality, it's not that I'm like, oh, screw them. It's just like, oh, you must be really boring. And backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like, oh, you're dealing with a lot of fear and insecurity, and I don't really want to work on a production like that. So mm -hmm. it's better that I do my thing, and I'm sure other people that are doing their thing will recognize that. And if they do, then we work together. Mm -hmm. Katie, they've got wonderful questions here, actually. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to my question if you want. <laughs> Someone worked very hard on these. Um, this is an interesting question. Glad uh, has identified bisexual men as one of the most underrepresented demographics in media. Why do you think bisexual women like Canary are more prevalent than their male counterparts? It's a complicated question. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> well, um, I think that in today's current society culture, it's easier to be accepted as a bisexual woman than it is a bisexual man. Um, and Therefore, we see more bisexual women than men in life, and then we see more of it on TV. Um, I think it's, there's, there's so much work that still needs to be done. Like, we've come such a long way, but there's still so much work to go. And it's like, if, you know, if I went out and, like, we went out for drinks and we made out, like, it would be like, aha, like, oh my god, like, we just made out. But like, you know, <laughs> like if a, a guy goes to the sports bar and like makes out with his friend, it's like, dude, you're gay. Like, it's a different, because of the way people think right now. <laughs> right? I mean, and, and it's like, but why is that? Like, why is it okay? Yeah. But then it's not, but then for them it's weird. And I mean, I think there's a lot of different factors on that. Um, I think just if, for a man still attracted to a woman who's like be, are, is with other women, so, you know, and I think a lot of women are not attracted to men who are with other men. Um, I don't know why, but I think it's. Well, we've had an interesting thing with your character, which now everyone's sort of more open about, which was we created you as a bisexual character and had those conversations with you ultimately about it. Maybe not when we should have. Uh, but then there was a preference from the powers that be, truthfully, that we pretty much only have you be with women for a little bit. And then there was more of an openness. Uh, and, and I know from our end, there was a sense of like, there was a sensitivity that we were gonna somehow upset lesbian members or bisexual members of the audience if we still showed you with men as a bisexual female character. So there was like a sensitivity around it, but it was sort of a very modern sensitivity because it wasn't, and then now we've sort of blown past that. You've been with male and female characters. And what was your experience of that while you were kind of going through that? And still. The, actually like, because I, I talk a lot like to the fans and you know, meet people at conventions or online and, and I listen to like kind of what, what they're thinking or feeling and 
the, <coughs> a lot of people were worried about Sarah being gay washed. They're mm. like, she's bisexual, why is she only with women? Like, why do they feel they can only show that? And there's a lot of things like, I don't know why it's weird for people, but like saying the word bisexual on, on TV like doesn't happen. And that's something like the community really wants. And to have a character that's bisexual when there's not very many, and then to feel like they're taking that away and making her just a lesbian was um, upsetting for people. And I actually, I talked to Mark and Phil a lot about it where I'm like, you guys, she's bisexual. Like we, we should like make sure that we're still honoring that. And they were very open to it. Um, that, so that, that was very important for me to keep her bisexual and not just be like, well, just women now. Yeah. Afisa? Hmm? <laughs> so you're in communication with a lot of young yes. people out there that are watching the shows too. Yes, yes, yes. And, and how are they receiving your character and, and what sense of responsibility do you have to the character's sexuality and to your community that, that adores you in this part? You know, I think, again, it's just really cool for them to see themselves because representation matters. And I have some women who come up to me at conventions and are just like, I didn't, I never thought this day would come. You know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's been so great to be able to watch television every week and see this character who is me and who represents me. I think it's really important for me to do it justice and, and to make sure I'm telling the truth about, you know, what her sexuality is. And at this point, it's she's a lesbian and, you know, um, I definitely like to explore more next season, her love life, because I got like amped up. I'm like, I'm playing lesbian. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then she was, you know, Anissa the first season is about, you know, discovering her powers and, you know, we, we really focused on that. So for next season, you know, I'd like to give them even more of that and really show, you know, uh, just different aspects of being in a relationship because that has not been her focus. So I like to see her in love and, you know, explore it some more and give them more to be, you know, inspired by. I think it was cool to hear, you know, when you said, you know, it's just it's just our duty to, you know, to, to, to do it justice and to, you know, give them something to tune in every week and feel very, very normal, you know, about. And young people see this very differently than people over a certain <coughs> age. I'm over a certain age. But <laughs> young people don't see sexuality and gender in the same, I mean, they, they speak with it with such uh, grace and fluidity, mm -hmm. and, and as evidenced on this panel, by the way, yeah. uh, in a way that, uh, you know, and I, I think sometimes I'm e even cautious about certain words and certain terminology because I a, don't want to offend or don't want right. to upset, but I also just don't know and haven't quite, even with all my own personal experience, haven't yeah. lived uh, their experience. And so I, I'm, I, it's always wanting to sort of uh, be open about it and, <laughs> and, and be expressive about it, but I, I find that there is also a, a lot of sensitivity around these. Yeah. these issues too and yeah. and as we know the comic book community online can be mm -hmm. uh have opinions yeah and no. uh <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, and and i find that they're very uh, uh and and rightfully so because it's under it's an underrepresented group yeah they're very protective of relationships and yes. things going awry or working out or not working out yeah and did you experience any of that this year at the you know, like feedback? yeah 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 as your character was you know having relationship troubles. Them wanting to see more of it? Or yes, wanting to see more of the relationship. For sure, the question is where is Grace and yeah. you know, like when is she coming <laughs> back? Like, are we gonna see more of her? And, and that's what, you know, it's exciting for me to tap into that more, hopefully season two, we yeah. explore that because, you know, Anissa, she, this, this was not, as we know, added on because of the television show. Like she was a lesbian in the comic book. So we're just paying homage to that story yeah. and, um, you know, wanting to tell more of it for sure. Yeah. Echo, your character was not gay in the comic book, <laughs> Mr. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten feedback regarding that in the sense of, like, you know, uh, how has that been to be a character who's now being represented as gay for the first time? I think the overwhelming majority of feedback has been positive, like 98%. I think 90% of most all feedback is positive, but we latch on to the 2% so much <laughs> and just let it become the thing that takes yeah. over everything, right? Yeah. Um, but most people <laughs> were so accepting of them, and, and to me, whether he was upset because his wife died in a comic or his husband left him in the TV show has nothing to do with who he is as a character, you know? It's right. just like, most people understand that too. And I think most people are very supportive and they really gel with the character and feel that he does pay a, a lot of homage to the um, original character. Um, but, you know, it's just been positive, really, to be honest. I, 
and that's what I latch on to. I try to let the negativity stuff fall to the wayside and realize that some people are just yeah. upset about their own lives and yeah. for like lashing out to other people. Um, but I just mute and keep moving, you know, for the most part. Mm -hmm. Jess, when you joined us, did we tell you that you were going to be playing yeah. NBA Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I was getting. You finally got it right. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we had a, a chemistry read, so, <coughs> so it was pretty. I was like, why am I chemistry reading with her? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a thinker. Um, so that's well, how we broke it to you. Yeah, okay. yeah. There was, there was a little bit of a um, backstory on Sarah's character, uh, Katie's character, Sarah, yeah. and, and that she would had a hard go at love and relationships. Um, so with the chem read, I put two and two together. I'm quite smart <laughs> and I um, figured it out. But what I love about what you do in, in Arrowverse and it's a slow burn and ultimately you don't, I find, and I, I'm new to this whole world. So I'm watching and trying to catch up and there's so many and so many beautifully full characters and it's hard on, on top of the crazy world of fighting like demons, <laughs> demons, monsters, dragons and space warriors. Um, but, so I'm just trying to catch up on all of it, but what you do so wonderfully is it's, it's a slow burn and I think you, and correct me if I'm wrong, but really do listen to the positivity from the fans and listen to, like it evolves slowly. I'm sure you have character, characters break, broken down before the season starts and where you want to go, but like if something's like not working, you're not like, you have, it has to be this way. You know, right. the show's ebb and flow with, when Ava showed up, I don't, I don't even think that I, w I was nervous, A, and because I, I again, had played um, a, a lesbian in another show, and actually the same thing happened. They, they, she just ended that relationship and then was just with guys for the rest of mm. the seasons, and people were like, what was that? Like, it was like that college, you know, oh, I just experimented in college. It was really a rude way to do it, you know? Like, she's just not a lesbian. She doesn't like women anymore, so I was really nervous, and I, it was so accepted. And you and say you've played many lesbians before. Yeah. Did you ever worry, sort of the opposite concern of what I was asking <laughs> Keenan, once you played a lesbian character, did you ever worry that that would impact your, your career in any way? So it's interesting, and this is, touches on something that you were saying uh, earlier, earlier, which you touched on, which is the, what happens behind the scenes of your job in the room where they're like, oh, he's too soft, you said, or oh, she's too hard. Not as, really not anymore, um, truthfully, but, but definitely it was very that. prevalent when I started. Well, for in, in my case, maybe now they just know that. I that think there's still a, a long way to go for a lot of, um, and we're talking about flushing yeah. new people through the system, younger people. I'm, you know, I, I don't know what how old you are, but it's you know the, the younger generation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get fired in right weeks. now on this stage. <laughs> Bye, everybody. That was good. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, but no, I think I also get get kind of up. The younger generation is like so, it, talking about. This millennium, I mean, it's just it just flows so freely. Like, there's no uppity, there's no anything. So there is, and and a lot of these executives and a lot of the heads of networks and things are still older, uh, much older sometimes. You mm. know, just in the content they're buying, in the shows that they're putting out there for people to watch, giving them a chance, like the c thinking outside the box, and they're being pushed because you know the youth is so strong and loud and powerful right now. But it's hard, it's hard to to get out of that what they're so comfortable with. You know, like when you're. 80 and you've been running this network for so long. It's like <laughs> so hard to get out of that box. Um, but in saying what you, in what you said, I've had, so, I, I think because I, I started playing so many lesbians because, and my manager is in this room somewhere, like we had the, that call so many times at the beginning of my career, like, dude, you're just too tough. Like you're too tough to play mm -hmm. that girl with that guy. And I'm like, what? Like, Dude, I'm Tell friends with Mary. Like, yes. Dude, uh, yeah, like I mean, you can have maybe my boyfriend thinks I carry his balls in a bag, but like I'm a tough broad. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Why can't then I be hot heterosexual and be tough? And like and uh, for a guy who's soft, oh you can't you can't be the husband of that woman because you're too soft. Like it shouldn't matter that should just be changing, you know? And so the fact that I I don't think it's ironic that I constantly get the grace of being able to play, you know, a character who's a lesbian, it's, but it still is um, like a stigma. You know what I mean? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Like it's, I th it's one last tough. one sort of like generally for all of you, which is when and how do you feel comfortable or do you feel necessary about sharing your private life with coworkers, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, or your bosses in many cases? Uh, and do you, is that something you consider and think about or, you know, and, and how so? I mean, I think you want to know, <clears throat> I think you want to know that, um, that it's safe to share your private life. Mm -hmm. you, like, I think everyone wants to be able to be at their job, no matter what job it is, and like be themselves, like be a human being. 
but you're sometimes afraid, especially when you're like growing in your career in whatever field, I think, like how much am I supposed to be myself on a job? Mm -hmm. How much is that allowed? How much is it accepted by my peers, my coworkers, and by our bosses? Um, and so I think, but when you, when you have that personal friendship and um, honesty and openness with, with each other, it just makes everything better. But I think it's tricky, like, mm -hmm. right, is that? <coughs> but you both have copious <coughs> amounts of followers. Every, probably everybody on here does. Like, it's hard even to, this, with social media, I don't know how you even don't have, per, you know, because you want to be as open social media as you can to your yeah. personal life. And it's so quick to just Google someone or show up on their Instagram and pretty much get an idea of them this day and age. So how do you it, it like gauge? For me to come out, like I came out to Candace first on Flash. Um, it was like the first time we hung out, um, and I was just so nervous. <laughs> and and she was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but then she kept my secret for like another six months because I wasn't comfortable yeah. coming out to a whole set because it's like one dealing with your own nerves anyway and just trying to do the job. But like, it's like there's a lot of people that work on set. So you know that if you're having conversations about anything in your personal life, it's, you're not just ha having it to one person, mm. you're mic'd. Mm -hmm. Like right. there's hundreds of people here. And then you, you, it's like being able to let that go. I don't know, it's, I think it's personal for everyone. Um, yeah. I mean, I felt very fortunate in all the jobs I've worked that I've, I've never even thought twice about not being who I am or people not being who they are <laughs> around me. And I think a lot of times it starts from the top so when you have someone like yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. overseeing a lot of these things, it just all kind of that goodness and yeah. acceptance kind of bleeds over into every aspect of it. Because literally this is one of the funnest jobs I've ever got to work in my life mm -hmm. with people who make me laugh, mm -hmm. make me feel comfortable, make me feel like I can be me. And I certainly want people to feel 100% yeah. like they can be them when they're on set with me. Because <laughs> you are like a, a family. Like you're doing yeah. this, you're in this thing together. You guys are in the field, like in battle together, trying to make some great art, you know? And I, I think, I just feel so fortunate that mm -hmm. it's never even really crossed my mind of like, can I not tell people that I'm black? <laughs> 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 <What>? <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> no, but you know, you know what I mean? That's a joke, obviously. But, you know? <laughs> but just so you can, you can just be who you are. And yeah. that's what's really important. And I feel very fortunate. And it makes um, for better work. Yeah, it yeah. makes for better work, 100%. Yeah. I think yeah. we're going to start seeing the opposite. <laughs> like, now that's all about diversity, it's going to, like, you're going to have straight, char like, straight actors pretending to be gay or bisexual like to get the role and be diverse and like having to hide their straightness <laughs> stuff like that's like already happening yeah too. like no it's no joke like it really real. is yeah <clears throat> i have to piggyback i think it starts at the top and i think it starts with the showrunners and the creators and the eps and and you know for them to set that tone for it to be a safe space i'm pretty open if i'm comfortable you gonna know me. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm very open. I'm very, you know, as you can see, all over the place. And if I feel comfortable, I'm sharing. You know, if I feel comfortable, you know, and I think it's just about being yourself and not caring about what anybody this thinks. This sort of brings me to one, one actually last question, and then we'll yeah. open it up to, which is, is that good? Is that good timing? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, what do you guys feel is your responsibility to the next generation as artists and as, and as people? Mm. Hmm. It's a good one. I, I mean, I think it really ties into that normalcy theme of like, I think my um, responsibility as an artist is to show people that they can be who they are mm -hmm. and not worry about it. I think it, 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 it's continuously getting better and better, yeah. and we just have to keep fighting to make sure that everyone has representation and can feel like they can turn on TV and see them and, and, and feel like, I can do that, I wanna strive for that. Cause I think you wanna keep influencing people to create beautiful art that moves people to actually make actual change in real life. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden, you know, talks so much about how Will and Grace actually changed a lot of people's perspectives about the LGBT community in the world. And art is just so important, so informative. I mean, Donald Glover just dropped this This Is America <laughs> video Ooh. and it moved Amazing. me like something I had never, felt and that's like the power of art and that's mm -hmm. our, our power as artists is to be able to get that out in the world to give the youth the hope to make effective change and to keep pushing for it. 
Well said. Did he just like answer? Paul? Yeah, that was like, oh, that's <laughs> And we're <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.